would you mind giving us just a quick primer on like who you are, who is Juno Dawson for anyone who might not know? Who is Juno? So I am from the UK. I am, I'm way more successful there than I've ever been in America. Um, <laughs> although obviously we, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about this book is gay, which is kind of what I am known for in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean, my personal story is I was, I was born biologically male and because I'm surprisingly elderly. What, what does that even mean, born biologically male? It's like su such a loaded statement, born well, biologically it, Well, male. isn't it? Because what, what even is that? But um, yeah, so basically the doctor said I was a boy. I disagreed very young. I was only about four, but because, because it was the 80s, um, I did not know that being trans was an option. Um, I so thought I, you were so, 25 years old. Oh, bless you. N alas, no, I'm 500. Um, I, yeah, I, I didn't start my transition until really, really late. I didn't, I came out, I spent all of my 20s um, as living the life of a gay guy. And then I came out to my nearest and dearest when I was about 28 and then really cracked on with my transition all through my 30s. So, um, I guess I'm like an, an elder, like an elder trans person or something. But um, yeah, but I think because I'd already written a couple of titles pre pre transition, mm -hmm. and and I was poor. I'm a working class northern writer. There was no there was no option of me kind of vanishing from public view and re-emerging. I, I just had to keep on working through my transition. So like yeah. almost by accident my transition became very very public and i ended up documenting it um in both a documentary series in the uk and i, and I had a column with glamour magazine as well so um mm -hmm. so so yeah so i sort of i i do not i'm not a big fan of the phrase sort of trans activist because i think it's been so weaponized against against people but um yeah i'm sort of like author slash noted transsexual kind of <laughs> that's me <laughs> Wow. Um, cool. And can you can you tell us a little bit about like your publishing history and like what what books have you published? What are the banned books of those books and like generally what what are they about? So the one the one that I'm most known for in the United States is a book called This Book is Gay, which I mm -hmm. wrote before my transition, but it was also a hugely important step in my transition because basically I wanted it to be very inclusive of all the LGBTQIA plus community. And so I cast a net and I was speaking to lots of people. But it was like maybe the first time in my life, given that I was in my sort of late 20s at this point, um, that I'd spoken to trans people who were about my age. And obviously I was interviewing them for This Book is Gay. And I realised this isn't fair you know these people mm. get these people get to live the life that i always knew i should have had and it was kind of the last domino to fall which is oh this is what it is to be transgender and mm. so so while it is this book is going i think i would have kept that title anyway because i think it's funny that book was as much a learning process for me as it was anybody else but this book is gay the idea was it was and that was what 2014 right yeah, 2014. So it was okay. it was designed to be because in my previous profession before I was a full time writer, I was a, an elementary school teacher, and I ended up specialising in um, citizenship, PSHE education, um, specifically sex education. So I left mm -hmm. the classroom, I stopped teaching, and I started being like an advisor or a consultant in sex education from from primary schools right up to high schools, like how to deliver really top-notch sex education. Mm -hmm. And so I, I knew in the UK that young LGBTQ people were not getting really very good sex education. So the idea was that's that was the gap that this book is gay was meant to fill. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a guide to coming out, identity, family, love, friends, and one chapter, one chapter is about sex. And of course, it's it's that chapter that has got me. Oh, well, sex, did, didn't you hear? Sex is bad. Sex is banned. Yeah, sex is banned in the United States. Banned and, and bad. And it's just all, it's just, um, it's gross and no one does it. And anyone who does it is bad. I think that's the idea. Yeah. 
and yeah. that's that's the, the saddest thing which is you know i want i wanted i was very concerned that the kids in my class can i was teaching 11 12 year olds i was really concerned that the kids were watching a lot of porn you know they had they had smartphones um and i was like oh you're very you're very young you're very young to be accessing that kind of stuff on your phones yeah i i i wish there was i wish there was a pg13 information book that could give you all the information you having to go to pornography but now of right. course i find i i find myself accused of being a pornographer which is ridiculous yeah that is ridiculous um and honestly like it is such an American thing to accuse people of that uh, because, because of our puritanical roots, because we ran away from y'all a couple hundred years ago. And with us, we, it, it's kind of strange. We took, when you think about like the, the Mayflower, that's always what people talk about is the boat that came over and blah, blah, blah. It was the weirdest group of zealots that landed in America. We got the weird ones that, that started us off. It was, and it's like so baked in even hundreds of years later that sex is bad, no matter what, we don't talk about it. And any mention of it is immoral, right? Whereas what you're suggesting is like, there's a line and, but, but there's also a need for education, right? And having mm -hmm. kids completely in the dark and especially with the advent of um, smartphones, it's like if they don't know what they're looking at, they're going to look at it one way or another, probably. But if they don't know what they're looking at, then the damage is like going to be potentially greater. Yeah. And it, I just felt the goal for this book is gay and, and its mm -hmm. follow up, what's, what's the tea, was I didn't want anybody else to get to 28 years old without being able to figure out who they are. Like, oh, is that when you realized like, 28? Yeah, I was like or, 28. I was so 27. I was like, yeah, so it's kind of like, I, I, I really strongly feel now that had there been books like This Book is Gay and What's the Tea around in the 90s when I was at high school, I think I would have initiated my transition much, much sooner because mm -hmm. I, I would have just been, all, all I ever wanted to be was a girl. So it, I would have just been, I would have been, I would have understood there is like a bridge to get there basically. Right, right, totally. So there was, uh, 2014 was This Book is Gay. What, what was the next uh -huh. book you did after that? So in the UK, there was a bunch. A lot of, I'm most known in the UK for my YA fiction until quite recently, I've written a fantasy mm -hmm. trilogy called Her Majesty's Royal Coven. Book two comes out in America today. So we're celebrating oh. release day right now. So that's called The Shadow Cabinet. Um, that's exciting. Thank you. So there was, there was like a little gap. So This Book is Gay came out in 2014. 14 in the United States. And uh -huh. do you know what? When it first came out, there was no fuss whatsoever. It just, it got a release. It's got a lovely forward by David Levithan. It was oh, well reviewed. Nice. It, was, it was well reviewed in Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. And then nothing, like we didn't hear anything until early 2017, where it was challenged in Walsilla, Alaska, which uh -huh. is where Sarah Palin comes from. And oh, well, didn't you hear that she can hear Russia from her house? Correct. If you if you press a like a seashell to your ear. <gasps> Look, we're side by side yes! now. You I did, did it. it, everyone. You did, I it. did it. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I was like hyper focusing. Oh god. Okay. Now the interview can begin. I'm kidding. Yay. All right, so you were in Alaska. I yeah, so um, that that was that was an eye opener, and um, it happened over kind of like the big challenge. There was like a protest outside the library or something, and I think it happened over Thanksgiving weekend. But mm -hmm. it did still it still made the news. It was mm -hmm. it made some headlines, and for me it was a bit of a oh that's interesting, and and it was resolved very quickly. Um, it it had been inaccurately shelved in the children's section. They moved it to the young adult section. And that, that was that. The, the fuss was over. But then as the political climate in America changed with, with during Trump's era, but then notably, I think after, I think when Trump left the White House, thank I God. think, thank God, there was, I think some of his supporters 
online looked for new ways to kind of cause trouble on a much more local grassroots level yeah. and so now you have groups online sort of organizing these are the books to challenge these are the books you need to be taking out of libraries so since right. 2020 so since 2020 you know i found this book is gay is being challenged all over the country widely and not not just in the states you would expect you know it's just had its first challenge in new york city as well the challenge was rejected but it feels like nowhere nowhere is safe from this very vexatious campaign basically so basically internet trolls are arranging campaigns or like kicking up dirt and helping various i don't know or or pushing various entities to ban your book because there is now now here because okay the reasoning that these ban these books are getting banned right or at least the thing that is being said by trolls and whoever it is that is banning sounds like from what you're saying is there is sex in these books and therefore it is banned right yes but i think i would i would imagine you'd agree that sex sure but there's a lot of books that have sex in them and it's not like your actual it's not like erotica right it's very instructional no. and scientific right so oh my gosh and, yeah like how how any i would challenge anyone to be aroused by by these books they're like they're textbooks they're like biology so so that that argument kind of goes out the window and it's it becomes well what do they really mean what do they really mean and it's like Oh, well, they just don't like the idea that this is about being gay, right? Like it's the name is in the book, right? It sounds mm -hmm. like they're banning it more for the title than the content. Yeah. And I think it'll it'll be really interesting to see what happens with What's the Tea. So there was a big gap between the two. So I, I wrote in the UK, I wrote, I wrote What's the Tea as a response to how, how turfy the UK had become. And I was concerned that... Notorious turf JK Rowling. Y'all, that is, she's just... Don't get me started. <laughs> I'm, I'm, her name, her name will not cross my lips. But okay. um, she, um, so I wrote "What's the Tea" in 2020, and it was released in 2021. And um, it'll be really interesting to see if that gets any pushback because I've learned from the Ferrar around this book is gay, so it's much more, much more PG-13 kind of. There's, there's no swear words. It's much more sober, and. If anybody was to try challenge what's the tea, it's just because they hate trans people. Like the yeah. most, there's, there's nothing else in there worth challenging other than no. the idea alone of trans people. So, um, so I say, yeah, good luck. But it has been, it's been sad. It, it, it's a real shame to see, you know, I've, sometimes people send me footage from these sessions where they're trying to challenge the book and it's, they always pick bits out of context. Mm. Um, nobody is considering what these words or phrases mean within the context of the book. Um, uh, can you give an example? I, well, the the one, there's one, like at the back, there's like a glossary of things you might have seen on the internet mm -hmm. and what it means. And so what it means, so you don't have to go on the internet, basically. So there's a couple of phrases in there that you might have seen or might have overheard but there's nothing graphic though i'm literally just saying this is what it is you don't need to google it but then the, the, of course the line is this book contains yeah here let me let me grab the book so i can kind of like show people because mm -hmm. it's 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 a really great cover if nothing else Thanks. um so like oh this is what it looks like it's the i don't know if i can unmirror my camera but oh yeah here, let me do it cool uh Yay. and like i mean first off what a great cover. Love Thank it. You. But then, yeah, there's, there's kind of like, you can, it's kind of like even marked in there, right? Of, mm -hmm. Like that's the glossary, right? Of, yeah. Um, you can go in but and the, see. The, the section, the section that causes the fuss is the section on um, sex and virginity and consent. But mm -hmm. there's actually, there's even, there's even like a disclaimer before that chapter saying, if you don't feel you are ready to start considering sexual relationships, just skip this whole chapter. Yeah. And there's the, there's another there's another section as well where and this this is quite a flex. I warn, I I talk about how to stay safe online, and yet they're saying I'm encouraging kids to download Grinder, which could not be 
further what? from the two. In fact, I literally advise <sighs> against it. I'm like, Grinder is kind of trash. Don't do it. Kind of. Of all, so, like, um, also of all apps. <laughs> Although it was a victim of its time. Remember, I read it in 2013. So, um, but um, yeah, so I think it's, you know, I, I know it's not about the book because if you look at the other books on the list, there are some classics. You know, I think, is it The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison is on the list? Yeah. Looking for Alaska by John Green. Um, the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So, you know, the, these are yeah. books, all the books on this list have real kind of, literary and educational merit these are books which i think would enrich any child's educational experience it's it's just it's I, like i said the word i keep coming back to is it's vexatious i think these groups are actively trying to waste time they're trying to make life difficult for librarians and teachers but at the same time that that's happening i think young lgbtq people are just getting a really sad message that their lives are still in some way controversial. Yeah. And I would like to think in, in 2023, our lives shouldn't even be controversial. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it's, I mean, the thing that that's in common between all the books on the list is that they introduce ideas that um, might make a child question the notion of, cisgender heterosexual dominance, right? Like uh, white cisgender. And white, yeah. White, white. Yeah. Like, those are the kind of like the three big categories, race, sexuality, and gender. Um, I mean, you could talk about religion too, but all of those books challenge it in some way, right? And yeah, they're wasting time. But I, I mean, I think from their point of view, not to give that any credence, but like, I think they feel they're fighting the noble mission to defend the white cisgender heterosexual agenda. Um, and yeah, it, the, the sad part is that that fight leads to queer kids feeling like their lives don't matter because that's what they think. That's what those people, mm. the, the book banners think that those lives don't matter. Um, it's very sad. But um, on the other hand, maybe you can speak to this like, being on the banned book list, I would imagine that press wise, that gets a lot more eyes on the book, right? Because you can't ban something, kids find it, right? Yeah, so it's it's a it's a double edged sword kind of in that, um, that on one hand, when the American Libraries Association publishes this yearly list, it's kind of like a shopping list for crazies. So it, it does Basically, the, the people challenging these books have never read them, but they, they have looked at the list and then they almost take the list down to their school library and, and insist these books are removed. But on the other hand, th there are so many librarians, booksellers who are so against book banning that they, they really throw themselves into fighting it. So you're all of a sudden... I started seeing these amazing photos from all around America of this book is gay in shop windows on displays. You walk into Barnes and Noble and they have a banned book display. And so, yeah, so it, it, I'm not going to sit here and say it hasn't boosted sales because it has, but as on an individual level, I feel a strange kind of queasiness about, about, about those, again, those young people who yeah. who are going into a bookshop and seeing a book with the pride flag with the progress flag on a banned book display yeah. it, it sends out a very sort of strange message but then maybe yeah. that's it's not a bad thing which is we we've come so far but there's still a fight there is still a, a genuine fight fight we can't we can't relax just yet as a community and um and i think yeah, there's still there's still some ways to go. Do you think that in some ways putting your book this is plural? I mean, this is the one that like is the what, what ninth most banned book in America. Yeah. But putting this book on a shelf, not only is it sending the message like your life doesn't matter to some people, do you think that it almost does gear kids up for the fight to come in some ways like hey th the fact that this is controversial means that like there's a struggle happening and like 
like, like it contextualizes their identity in struggle, which is not good, yeah. but like, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, so there, there is a, there's a bit at, at the back of, of birth books about, you know, there, there is still work to be done and there is still, there's still a struggle. But I think the, the better thing that comes out, I'm hoping birth books, I spoke to dozens of LGBTQ people. So it wasn't just me as a, as a white woman, basically giving my take on the world, kind of. I think a young person would come away from these books thinking, I'm not the only one, I'm, I'm not alone. And this isn't a fight I have to do by myself. Um, I, th I think now that the nice thing with the internet, I think, you know, we could all sit here and criticize the internet, but I think it has meant wherever you are in the world, you can go online and you can find your tribe. Uh. And I think um, it's nice that there are books to support that as well. So whether you're doing something like this or whether you're reading a book like This Book is Gay, it's reassuring to know that you're not in it by yourself. And I think the thing with this book is gay you know it's, it's turns 10 next year wow it, it's i know that, okay now i know we had said 2014 out loud but it does not mm. feel like that was nine years ago right um what's lovely is i'm now seeing the fruits of my labor which you know i was at the attitude awards last year which is this sort of glitzy showbiz thing in london and lovely little joe Locke from heartstopper came running over to me and he was like you juno dawson i was like yes and he was like oh my god my mum got me this book is gay when I was like 13 and it was like the best thing I'd ever read and it helped me so much and now Joe is what 21 he's a very successful actor he's thriving and I'm like that's why I did it because I just wanted I wanted these sort of 14 year olds to have a map through the bumpiest little bit and and now I'm yeah. seeing 10 years on I'm seeing that these young adults have become adult adult and they're thriving and that that's kind of what i wanted um a book a book like this book is gay is never going to be any substitute for experiencing the world but i think there's some tips and information in there that i think can at least keep you safe you yeah. know and i think i think that's i wish i'd had it i wish i'd had all these books when i was a kid my life would have been just that little bit easier i think yeah I mean, you and I share the realization of, you know, I guess, gender dysphoria, being trans at around the same age. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned, I, I, I think, I've told my story before on stream, but basically late 2020, and that was when I was 27, 28. So, I mean, do you think, would you, like, if you had gotten this book, do you think you would have known sooner? Yeah. I really think so. Although it's difficult to say. I think for me, it was about meeting trans women in real life. There was something about seeing, there's, there's a, a, a friend of mine, she's called Isla Holdham. She's amazing. She's a helicopter pilot. And there was just something about sort of seeing her and her wife go about their life that I was like, I felt jealous. You know, yeah. I, it, didn't, it didn't quite seem fair. And I had seen by by 2012 when i started telling my friends um 2013 ish when i started telling my friends um i had of course seen trans people on television yeah. but i still hadn't quite joined the dots there was still yeah. something there was something about meeting trans people trans men and trans women in real life and sort of seeing it for myself like seeing was believing i think but i do think had this book been available in the 90s, I think I would have started the questioning process. Yeah. You know, I think much, much sooner. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, it, it, you would think like, and I can relate to, to, the, to this too, of, all right, let's say 15 years old and barring something like so informative like this book, you know, seeing a trans person on TV or hearing the word transgender or even like kind of muting someone in passing. Maybe if you're not, it, it's easy to think like, oh yeah, I would have immediately realized, right? Just because, oh, that's me. And mm -hmm. I think that's true to a certain extent for some people, but when, when you are so deep in the 
you know, biological sex is gender kind of like construct that you don't question until you think about it. Right. It's just mm -hmm. like what we, I was, I'm a boy. Like, what can I do? I, I don't know. I, and, and like trans people, oh, no, like you hear about like, sometimes usually the first thing you hear about trans people is negative. Um, yeah. And, and that's an easy way to kind of just write that off of, well, I'm not, I'm not one of those. Um, it can be tough to realize when you don't have the vocabulary to put to, oh yeah, I'm like deeply, deeply trans and have, am, am suffering from gender dysphoria. Yeah. I think as well, there was something about the stories from the nineties and early noughties that trans people in the media were always either figures of ridicule, mm -hmm. dead, figures of ridicule, dead, or quite tr tragic. It was always a very sad story. Um, I think, being trans look like something regular people experienced. It looked like something yeah. very heightened and dramatic. And so I think representation of trans people has, has come on a long, long way. And, and as yeah. well as seeing young, seeing young trans people, I'd never really seen very many young trans people in the media. I think reality TV slightly changed that. And so I think with the advent of reality TV, it was, oh, it was time to sort of see see real trans people and not not played obviously when you saw a lot of trans characters they were often played by cisgender actors as well so i guess that didn't quite help but the dance um, girl. yeah the dance, and, and as well is it was it fam kianson who was in nip tuck as well and oh where, where did, did she play a trans person yeah she did yeah so i think i mean although fam kianson i she, yeah, who doesn't want to be fam kianson she was gene gray yeah, well, gold. more importantly, she was Xenia on a top in Goldeneye. Yeah, absolutely. I can't that breathe, was, Xenia. Whew, that might have been my... So, you know, I go back to that movie all the time, and I can't help but thinking that was, like, the earliest of early queer awakenings for young Lily. The Oh, it's me, Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah, That'll do that it. Me. That'll mm -hmm. do it. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, actually, okay, but I'm curious. You, you mentioned reality TV. What, yeah. what, what, what's, because I don't watch reality TV, so I'm not familiar with like instances of trans people on reality TV. <coughs> Sorry, one sec. Bless you. Um, so there was a very notable one in the United Kingdom in 2005. So this is going back so far now, nearly 20 years. 2005, we had a transgender contestant on Big Brother called Nadia Almeida. And it was very strange. I'm not going to rose tint it. So in the Big Brother house, Nadia didn't tell anyone she was trans and nobody knew she was trans. She was stealth, for want of a better phrase. And when people were evicted, there was this very ghoulish moment where the host was like, can I tell you a secret about Nadia? She's secretly trans. And it was, it was a real gotcha moment. But the public loved Nadia and she won that series on a public vote. We loved her. She was hilarious. She was camp. She was diva. She was funny. Um, this was, of course, after Dana International had won the Eurovision Song Contest as well. So this was, it felt like a different world now, a world where trans people, there was such a public compassion for Nadia. And and then she came out and she got like a spin-off show by herself. And and yeah, it was it was a very different time. But for whatever reason, I just still didn't see myself in Nadia in particular. I don't know why. I could not tell you why. At the time I was having, I was in my early twenties. I was, I was just out and getting drunk a lot of the time. So maybe that was something to do with it. I don't know. But um, um, I was, yeah, I, I guess at that time I wasn't really asking the big questions about myself. But Nadia, yeah. Nadia was a really important figure. It, and I think it's so strange at how negative the media is now around trans women in the uk when actually in 2005 they were celebrating nadia they, they she was the yeah. big public favorite things have changed uh mm -hmm. not necessarily for the better in terms of the volume of transphobia has been turned up but i want to do quickly and address the chat hey y'all i see what's happening i'm not sure how we got here but i'd like everyone to please deep breath and let's listen to Juno because Juno has awesome things. I feel kind of like I'm getting back to my old teacher days a little. 
I know we're all a little bit excited, a little bit upset about things that may or may not have happened. Just, I love y'all. Let's, let's, thank you. So, Nadia. Yes, Nadia. Um, there was also that moment on um, Survivor that I have seen. Mm -hmm. What a gut wrencher, that moment. I mean, oh, the one recently, like, yes. What's that recent? I don't know. The one where the guy did the trans man. Yes. Yeah, like, that, that, what that, a, what a, yeah. Um, but there was a different one? No, I, I think that's the one a... I saw. That, that went really viral. That, that I, even I've seen yeah. that, and we don't even get Survivor in this country. So that one, that one went all over the internet. Yeah, I mean, just like, just like the, the classic ally who thinks they're an ally, but they're actually not an ally. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, so let's get back to your books. So we've got, this book is gay. Thanks. Now, the more recent one, and the one <gasps> that I, I mean, I haven't had a chance to read all of this book is gay. I would imagine that I probably am already well informed on a lot of the stuff in here, but this one, I gotta say, really, really incredible for me. Can Thank you me. give a brief overview on kind of how we got to this book, generally what's it about? and maybe a reason why that I might be so excited other than the fact that it's about being trans. Yeah. Um, um, well, for one thing, it's about a girl called Lily. But, yes! Um, yes, hi, <laughs> Lily. It came about, it was a very strange one. So I was minding my own business, and one day my agent rang and said, a publisher in the UK would really like you to do a picture book. And I was writing at the time really gritty young adult fiction about addiction and assault and all this kind of like the real top end of young adult fiction. And I was like, Juna Dawson doing a picture book. That, that's a stretch. But then I spoke with the editor and she was in this situation, a real life situation, where some of her family, she had a teenage trans family member and she was like, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a book about, so you could explain a trans sibling to a younger sibling. Mm -hmm. And in this woman's family, there was a trans teenager and the family was struggling to explain what was happening to her younger siblings. And I was like, okay, maybe. And I was like, can it be funny? Can it be stupid? I don't want it to be sad. I don't want it to be mawkish. I want it to be really, really fun. And also, I wanted it to address the British press. I wanted to address all of those kind of fear-mongering, scare-mongering headlines about trans kids and trans kids being indoctrinated. And so I was like, right, I want to call it, you need to chill. And, and the rest is kind of history. It's, it's a rhyming picture book aimed at elementary school children that very, very compassionately introduces the idea that the little girl on the front, her big sister is trans. And I wanted to do it in a, I know from when I used to be a teacher, kids love rhyming texts. They love call and response texts. So that, that's what I set out to do. And, and I, I love that kind of, I'd love to see people get angry about it because it's such a cute book. Like, I, I didn't illustrate it, Laura Hughes did, but it's so sweet. Like, how could anybody have an issue with something so cute? I totally agree. Quick question from the audience. Where, uh, where can we buy the book in the U.S.? I would imagine most bookstores, if not Amazon. All good bookshops. It's, yeah, All good and, and, and I'll tell you what, because I know this has been quite controversial. <gasps> it is widely available. In five. So, mm. They didn't move mm. it to the back of the store, did they? Not that I'm aware of. Not Good. they didn't. They didn't hide it under the blanket in the warehouse, as far as I know. But it was part wow. of their Target Pride campaign, so it's still Pride Month Good. for another week. So, um, so yes. Yeah. Yeah, so and then the world goes from rainbow to black and white. Yeah. Once Quick, take it all down. All all the queer people have gone home for another year. Exactly. It's like Brigadoon. We've all gone away again. Yeah, I would say I would say that um, even though maybe Target might not be in the queer communities goodest graces right now uh worth the trip um what what i can say is yeah imagining how could someone be angry at this i'm i'm 
the thing that I have that it reminds me of the most is kind of like a Seuss style. It's kind of Seussian in, in the repetition, right? Because mm -hmm. basically the kids will say, the kids are like asking the sister on the cover. I think that's the cover, right? The sister yeah, yeah. on the cover, where's your brother, right? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that my brother is not my sister or, you know, my, my, my sibling is transitioning, right? Yeah. So, but they're like imagining all of this craziness, right? Of, are they on the moon? Did they go do something crazy? Did they go to the jungle? Whatever it is. And like in, in that fantastical sort of way, right? Like, and it's illustrated in a fantastical way too. Like, did, are they on a roller coaster? Like, are they here? Are they there? Are they anywhere? One fish, blue fish. And then the repetition of you need to chill, right? Like you're, mm -hmm. you're like making things up. So, so in some ways, like as an adult, it's an interesting read as well just because it is this metatextual commentary of British press, yes, but American press as well. Mm -hmm. um, that there's all these narratives that are being spewed is maybe the right word, uh, that just, they're not coming from anywhere. They're not based in reality and they're, they're screaming them, but mm -hmm. it's like, hey, you need to chill. Um, so it's, it's, it's so interesting um, and also the sibling's name is Lily. She's now um, called Lily, yeah. She's now called Lily. So, so yeah, how has how the reception been to this book? And, you know, I, I don't even know, can you ban a children's book? If so, has it been banned? <laughs> well, if if the trajectory of this book is gay is anything to go by, it, it mm -hmm. might take some time. It will take, okay. it could, could take nearly 10 years, couldn't it? But right now it's just come out, it's finding its way into the, the, the hands of the people who need it so that's really why i'm in america right now so i've been mm. speaking all day long today with librarians and educators um getting it in front of their faces because hopefully they'll make it part of their classroom culture mm. and you know they, they were these these are very invested people who are trying their hardest to do the right thing and they were like at what age should we be reading this book and i was like no i, I think it's the existence of trans people, I really don't think it's that deep. Like that, I doubt there's very many middle schools in, in America now that wouldn't have a child who is questioning their gender. And so I think a bit, a bit like with the, the picture books and Tango Mix 3 or the family book, I, do, I just don't think it's controversial to have them in your classroom. But, but right. sadly that that's, that's my, optimistic brain speaking it is still controversial to have them in classrooms because people are giving these librarians and teachers a really hard time for it um but what i like about you need to chill is that, is that the response to those people is on the front cover you need mm -hmm. to chill yep. and i think you know one of the teachers said her little phrase when anybody when anybody kicks off because they have a little trans kid in their class, is don't you don't you want this child to feel included? And I think that's that's the right response, which is what is what is it about kindness you don't like? Yeah, yeah. Um, it it kind of it kind of blows one's mind when when people get so upset about this because. I mean, the, the, you know, once the, the big reveal, even though it's kind of obvious from the beginning, at least as an adult, is, is it okay if I like read a section of it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what, what they say is, um, the truth is that my brother, Bill, is now my sister, Lily. It was maybe quite a shock at first, but she's really just the same. She looks a little different and she has a new first name. She's still clever and funny, kind and cool. She's one in a mill. If we have a problem, we say, hey, you need to chill. It's like, it's so, you know, one of the things that the arguments against trans people go, well, sometimes they will go deep into like gender and sex are the same thing and like auto gender, whatever. It doesn't, it, all these different like scientific yeah. reasons why it's okay to discriminate against trans people. When in reality, a lot of allies don't even necessarily 100% understand what it means to be trans. But they don't need to, because all you need to know 
is that my name is Lily and your name is Juno and we're normal people. And that's it. Like you could go and read up and understand, you know, what, what is gender right? and you can do awesome. a little deep dive. I bet if you spend 30 minutes to be an expert, but you don't have to. And all you need is what these people are saying, which is like, that's Lily now. Cool. Great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's frustrating. And I, and I say in, in this book is gay, as far as I remember, it was so long ago. No, no one is asking why are straight people straight? Why are cisgender people cisgender? That's just so the default. And so it's kind of like this extra labor that LGBT, LGBTQ people have to do, which is asking these big questions all the time. Why, mm-hmm. why, why, why is this happening? Oh, little dog. Why is this happening? Why are you here? And like, nobody else is doing that. Like, I don't no. see why we should have to give up a bunch of our time to justifying our place on this planet. It's yeah. just, you know, th- this is this is the way I exist on this planet. And honestly, my, my transition hasn't impacted anyone else except my immediate family and my husband and that is literally it that is the only people who've been affected by my transition and like i would say to people who don't maybe don't get it which is just we're only here for a little while let's make our stay on earth as joyful as possible Mm. yeah yeah totally can i ask were you married before your transition no, you know, so I met my husband five years ago. So I, I started my transition t- 10 years ago. So um, yeah, so I met him well, well into my transition. Gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. But yeah, I mean, this is this is just a really sweet book. I um, would absolutely recommend it to anyone. You need to chill. Um, also, this book is gay. Also, can you talk a little bit about what's the tea and kind of how, you know, where where this falls in terms of mm. like what's in it, what people could expect, who it might be a good read for. So I really like what's the tea. So what's mm-hmm. the tea was my chance in some ways. So we've we've updated this book is gay twice since it mm-hmm. first came out to try to keep it relevant. But there were some things which were just bugging me about this yeah. book is gay. Sorry thoughts books if you're listening. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um like Obviously, by by the time I came to write What's the Tea, I'd been living as a trans woman for what seven or eight years, mm. and and um and there were some things that were just bugging me a bit, and and I realised because of the environment around trans people and particularly trans teenagers, it was re- relevant to have a book specifically about trans and non-binary issues, um, and and I like I like What's the Tea in some ways it feels even more inclusive than than this book is gay in that there was something about the sex ed section in this book is gay that had bothered me and um, because it focused very much on cis bodies um and and so I, I wanted to basically just just let let trans people have their own little bit of oxygen kind of and give them give so, us our own little bit of space kind of so i just randomly open a page i have not had a chance to read this yet but i'm just going to read the line that i uh i felt okay. which is an absolutely you say it so well. It's the page, page 214 on sexuality. It says, in the easiest possible terms, sexuality defines who you'll eventually, the key word being eventually, go to bed with, and gender is who you go to bed as. There, there it is. Are. There it is. I mean, that's that's like the, the kind of easy to access stuff that is in here. We've got a transgender hall of fame. We've got, there's like, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's a book, but there's, you know, pictures here. Oh, I don't know if I can show that on TikTok live, but like very <laughs> textbook informative, um, but still like easy and fun to read. Yeah. And I felt as well, so that one came about, when did I start writing? What? So I, basically I was getting really cross. The hmm. UK, so when I came out, in 2013 things felt really exciting for trans people it felt like we were entering like a new era of trans inclusion and then in 2018 there was this kind of referendum on the gender recognition act where cis people were asked in the uk how they felt about trans people and the mood got ugly yeah 
like yeah. the the press and the mood turned gross. People who had never thought about trans people in their whole life suddenly have an opinion. There were TV debates. It was gross. And, and I was like, I was cross. And I don't want to be a politician. I have no interest in getting into politics. But I was like, I can do this one thing, you know, and this book is, this book is gay has sold so well in oh. both the UK and in America that I was like, it's time, it's time for a sequel. And it's time yep. to, it's time to address this head on because I can't do anything about the conservatives. I can't do anything about Donald Trump, but I can write this book, you know, and I can get it published and I can get it across the line and hopefully all those people who've supported this book is gay will support what's the tea as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope they do. I mean, you know, and, and like, you know, this book is gay is right here. It's on the cover on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and it does feel like a sequel because this one has the progress flag. And then this of course is the trans flag. And if you think about it in just on a timeline of progress, we kind of had, at least in the United States, I won't speak to, to, to the UK, but, the big moment for specifically gay rights, like homosexual, for homosexual people, their big moment, I remember it was 2015 is when we legalized gay marriage. That was, that was kind of like after many, many years of fighting for it, of course. But I think the issue of gayness came to a head in the early 2010s um, as like, hey, y'all, we've been we've been discriminating against gay people for way too long. And uh, th th it's, it's time for that to end. And I think not everyone is cool with that. A lot of people still discriminate against gay people, but I think yeah. 2015, when that happened in the United States, the overall like okayness of discriminating against gay people in any way, shape or form, uh, ceased to have like the kind of like uh, permissibility that it used to. Right now, we are in the struggle years, hopefully before whatever kind of watershed moment happens for trans people, right? Mm -hmm. in, in the way that in 2014, when, when this book is gay came out, the, it, everything was coming to a head just for being gay. And it's not like being, this, this book is gay doesn't cover a wider spectrum of things, but w w this is the book. This is what we need right now. This is, this is kind of like, hey, in 2014, we're talking about just kind of gayness in a broader sense. Homosexuality mm -hmm. was the, the thing that we all, oh yeah, queer. That just means you like the same sex as opposed to this is like, yeah. you know, trans people too, right? Yeah. Well, it, it feels certainly in the UK that gay rights feel quite well embedded now. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we passed um, gay marriage, same-sex marriage and same-sex adoption at around the same time. We were a little earlier than America, I think. We were sort of more 2008, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And and um, it's passed with no fuss. It hasn't, it hasn't really, it hasn't, uh -oh. it hasn't caught, oh, sorry, I'm back. I'm about, oh. oh, yeah, sorry, you're back. Go ahead. I need to plug, I need to plug my phone in, I think. Um, here we go. There we go. Um, so yeah, there was there was no fuss, there was no controversy. Whereas it mm. feels like trans rights are very much still in play. And right. it feels like there's, there's still a very active fight for us to cling on to what rights we do have. Um, and I do wonder if that's why there are some people, especially in the UK, I don't know if it's happening in the US, some people who are really trying to do the whole LGB without the T thing, kind of who are trying mm -hmm. to divide the trans community from the rest of the LGB plus community. And I think that's incredibly dangerous. Oh yeah, because I that's think, huge. I think our rights are that little bit more vulnerable. And so if you separate us from the rest of our community, then we're, we're even more perilously placed. And that's why in all of my books, I advocate for nothing but kind of solidarity between all members of our community, because if, if trans rights were to be rolled back, I see mm -hmm. no reason why they wouldn't also start to try and undermine um, right. gay lesbians. And, and I think we see that with, with, with Drag Queen Story Hour. I think a mm -hmm. lot of people really don't know the difference between yeah. a gay person and a trans person, kind of. No clue. It, it's all one, one it, yeah. mission. Because, they, because to them, they don't see being trans as valid in the first place, right? So mm -hmm. the fact that anyone would... Um, 
put on clothes that are girly or whatever, it all falls in the same box of bad stuff. Anyways, um, I, I, I also wanted to ask, I know we've been going on for almost an hour here, but I was curious, uh, a question from Liz, who is a Lily's lovely. Uh, what, so you've been, I'm a, sure you've seen all of the awfulness that's been happening in the last year or two. Um, what, how, what, what is, what are your thoughts on that? Like what's happening in Florida? I'm not as up on the UK, but I do see headlines and they don't look mm-hmm. good. But no. you know, do, you, do you, do you think that this is like everything coming to a head and that we're still moving in a good direction or is it more like things, this is, these are just the dark days and hopefully we can turn these around as time goes on. I think the thing that the UK and the US have in common is that for both of us next year, it's an election year. Mm. Um, speaking for the UK specifically, we've had the same government for 15 years now mm. and they, they have nothing to offer. The, the country is in a real mess. Brexit was a flop. Um, the recession, um, the economy's in a mess. Mortgages are higher than they've been in a generation. Families can't afford food. And the Conservatives have no one to blame because they've been in power for so long. And so all they've got in that arsenal is garbage, like culture war nonsense. Mm. So, oh, Roald Dahl books are being changed. Oh, woke, woke agenda in schools teaching about slavery. Oh, and one of their big pieces of ammunition is trans rights. Um, yes. which is why, which is why, just this week, mysteriously, Rishi Sunak was caught mocking trans. I saw that in in a leak. Like, I know who leaked it. Like, that was not an accident. You know, he is he is signalling. You know, they have nothing else except you know refugees. Like, trying to turn refugees into scary bogeymen, kind of as well. So that that's what they've got. So I think next year is going to be ugly politically as as people like Rishi Sunak try to use the trans community to win a few votes. But I just don't think they're going to win. And I think the reason is because I think voters have a lot more intelligence than people think. And I think people will realise that attacking trans people isn't going to make food cheaper. It's oh. not going to make fuel cheaper. It's not going to solve the problem in Ukraine. It's It's... You know, and I think, I think actually voters want them to shut up talking about this nonsense and actually make the country better. And I think, and I think that's why probably next year in the UK we'll be looking at a difference in leadership. And I do think. Would you say that, would, would you say that it's going to be like the, the main issue? Like, like if you talk, if you like look at a list of the things they're going to talk about and debate on stage together. Yep. Yeah, that, And I will say this, so th- we're looking at our opposition leader as a chap called Keir Starmer. Um, I suspect he probably will be the next prime minister. Um, he's a man no one loves, but no one hates. He's one, he's Joe, one of them. Joe, Joe Biden. <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to say. I didn't want to say. But I think I'll know. tell you what. The ne- whoever is going to be in next in the White House uh, couldn't be left enough. That's That's what I say. Uh, but yeah, it is, um, I, I think it's going to be the same in the States yeah. where especially like the candidates that are, and normally my, my normal, um, uh, followers will, will attest to the fact that we rarely get political. Right. But my yeah. politics are obvious. I don't hide them. It, you know, we have our, our, our boy, Ronnie DeSantis, who's the Florida guy who's doing the, like, you know, where Donald Trump was just like dumb evil, like, like, like tripping over himself evil DeSantis has might as well have like a twirly mustache mm-hmm. you know and like have a rocket jetpack or whatever and fly around mm-hmm. hurting people but chances are this man is gonna get some attention in the election cycle and that's gonna be his platform and yeah. I wonder and I and I just wonder like what does that mean not just for but you and I are at the forefront right we're talking we're the tip of the spear you're for, for crying out loud, you're writing like, cute children's books that you can buy in Target. It's awesome. Um, and, you know, I'm on TikTok out here and getting the, you know, all these awful comments and making just, we're all out here trying to make informative content. But like for your average, not as perceived 
normal trans person who's working a nine to five job, like what does it mean for that trans person in the next couple of years? Like, I want to say it shouldn't mean anything, but I feel like it does. I think I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I think all we can do is right now, I think it's we go into the brace position. I yeah. think be- better to be over prepared than under prepared. And I think for me right now, I know that next year is going to be horrible in, in the UK. There's going to be, because despite fairly compelling polling to suggest that the Tories are done for, we still have an incredibly right wing press. Yeah. And they will just keep, they'll keep pushing out this stuff. Um, and, and it is, it makes your day. I do, I, I don't know why I do it to myself, but every morning I check the front pages of the papers to see what, what it is trans people are this this day kind of what's what's the scare story today and but i but what i see when i'm in high schools young trans people they just they they are living their lives they have completely detached from the mainstream media in a way that i think i'm still kind of clinging to it for some reason yeah and none of this conversation is deterring them from being who they are and that's really, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's just about nothing, nothing can stop us being who we are. Right. Yeah. No, no nothing. Um, you know, there's no... If things were to get really grim, it would be, like, the, the thing that would absolutely not never, ever change. Like, it would... There's no... There's no going back no. on these things. Um, it is just who we are. And um, mm-hmm. I think the good news is we have, a, even though we have a lot more enemies, weirdly, it feels like, I think we also have a lot more allies and that the noise has just gotten a lot louder. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are more tr- cis people out there who understand what is going on, understand what it means to be trans and understand how ridiculous it all is and are willing to advocate for us. Now, are those the people who are um, our politicians? Maybe not as much, to a certain extent. It depends. Do you know what? I'm, I'm, I really agree because a couple of years back when things were being quite gnarly in the UK, I sort of said to one of my best, best friends, you know, do I need to leave? Like, do I need to move to Ireland or something? Which is a weirdly bit more progressive these days. And Kerry was like, we, my friend, she was like, I don't think we can rely on politicians to do anything for LGBTQ people right now, but we can do stuff in our community. And when I'm not, when I'm not in Chicago, I'm in Brighton in the UK, which is one of the most liberal queer places in the UK. It's an amazing city. And that's what we did. We were like, well, we can't change the prime minister, but we can make Brighton like a sanctuary so like i i'm in a cabaret troupe so we we do cabaret and it's a very safe space for queer people and i think that's what we can all do we we might not be able to change things on a national level but we can make our towns and our cities we can make them the kindest most welcoming places they can be and and we can do that you know we can do that personally we don't need to wait for some politician to tell us it's okay to create an amazing queer cabaret we can do that for ourselves oh yeah yeah i mean you kind of gotta just at a certain point do it yourself Mm -hmm. um and one good way to do it and to help your community understand what's going on is to buy either you need to chill what's the tea or this book is gay which looks like this um just like Ollie, Ollie, you still there in the chat? Ollie just posted in the Discord, just bought all of them. So that's oh, good. Oh, how nice oh, is that? Is. Thank you. Thank you, Ollie. And uh, you can buy them Target. Also, the new book, quick plug for that really quick, just, just in case. Yeah, so if, if you are an adult and if you like yeah. witches, I've written, it's a fantasy trilogy. The first part was called Her Majesty's Royal Coven. It was a big, it was a Barnes & Noble pick last year, so it did really well. And then book two is The Shadow Cabinet, which came out today. Yay! Celebrate! I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a pizza to celebrate. Hotel pizza! Woo! Ooh. Okay. Before we go, last question: What pizza chain in America do you think is the best? Do you have any opinions on it? I don't know if I've been here for long enough. I've okay. in fact, I've not had not I've not had a single pizza since I got here, which feels like I've I've missed out at home. So I will speak for the UK. 
I suppose I love supporting we have a local independent it's called pizza face but if I want if I want like a, a dirty pizza it, it's Domino's I just I, I love Domino's is that hey. bad no look there's okay. no shame for chain food here in this space this is a safe space for chain food I would also say that yeah Lisa set points out that you're in Chicago so deep dish might be the move Got I don't think deep dish is pizza I, I don't think it is and that's a hot take um, I had my first, I had my first ever Red Lobster yesterday. I didn't when Beyonce sang about Red Lobster. I didn't know what that was about. I now right. understand. I went and had my first Red Lobster. I feel I've arrived. I just had like a salmon salad. It was it was delicious. It was nice. What did you eat? The Cheddar Bay biscuits. Oh, I I did sample it. I'm I'm not sure what that was about if i'm honest that's not, that is that is i know that's not something that is not something i've ever had it's not something you get in the uk okay. in the uk a biscuit is a cookie like a, right. it's a sweet thing so to me it was a bit like a cheese scone yeah it was okay it was, it was fine i was just i was confused and slightly delighted by it good hey that's that that that's that that is a better feeling than i have from most of the food at red lobster so you're doing okay thank you Okay. Uh, Juno, thank you for joining us. It has thank been you. This has been so good. I feel pleasure. I've I've been a bit starved of queer people since I've gone on tour. So this is I feel slightly healed by this experience. Thank you. Yeah, no, the feeling is mutual and like I never have people on my stream, so it's nice to have uh anyone, but no less like a, a well read and well spoken award winning author uh with cool books to boot. Uh one last time, this book is gay. What's the tea? You need to chill. Juno Dawson, thank you so much for joining us.